Hey guys, Fake Rooster here, and today we're going to be making a start on a series I've wanted to create for a while, and that is Weapon History. I'm really looking forward to kind of getting into this. I want to combine a little bit of real life with video games and history and things like that as well. We're going to be kicking off the series with what is arguably the quintessential modern British assault rifle, and that's the L85 or the SA80 as it's also known. So what you'll see in the background is gameplay from Battlefield 4. We'll talk a little bit at the end of the video about real world versus video game versions of the rifle, but we're going to start with the history of the real world weapon first. The Enfield 85 is a family of standard issue rifles used by the British Army and the Jamaican Defence Force. All the weapons in the SA-80 range use 5.56mm NATO rounds. SA-80 is basically a code as well, so SA-80 just means small arms 1980s. That gives you a sense of the origins of this gun. The first prototypes were created in 1976, with production of the A1 variant starting in 1985. And there was this great excitement that the armed forces were soon to be given the world's most advanced made and designed in Britain rifle, okay? That was a really, really big deal for the British Army at this point in history. The rifle was originally designed and produced by the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield Lock in North London, and in 1988, the production of the rifle was transferred to the Nottingham Small Arms facility owned by Royal Ordnance, which later became BAE, which you're probably familiar with. Um, they do a lot of work with the Army and the Navy in Britain, um, particularly nuclear submarines and things like that as well. So the L85 or SA80 is a gas-operated, magazine-fed, selective fire rifle of a bullpup layout. The rifle is fed using NATO standard magazines, which are very similar to the M16 magazines and have the standard capacity of 30 rounds in the magazine. Standard issue for these rifles, uh, scope-wise, was a 4 times SUSAT telescope with an illuminated reticule. The non-military version of the rifle is fitted with fixed iron sights and an integrated flip rear sight and a post fore sight. So um, it can be used, obviously, without a scope as well. The L85 can also be fitted with a knife-type multi-purpose bayonet and later versions of the rifle could be fitted with a 40mm under-barrel grenade launcher. So that's the, the kind of basic specifications for the rifle and its kind of origins. Now we're going to talk on a little bit of the more controversial um, problems with the L85, particularly in its early days and in the first variant. So it came with some teething problems um, with soldiers fighting in the deserts and more um, extreme conditions, finding that there were a lot of flaws with the weapon. The original SA-80, so that's both the L85 and the L86 rifles, were plagued with many problems, some being really serious. In general, the L85 was considered unreliable and troublesome to handle and maintain. Most problems, apparently, were traced to improper care and maintenance of weapons. However, complaints that I saw from soldiers included criticisms over the reliability of the me mechanism that was holding the magazine in place, so sometimes that would just fall out, which isn't great in a frontline uh, firefight scenario. Um, and they said that there was problems with the firing pin and you couldn't fire it from the left shoulder because of the shape of the gun. You could only fire it from the right. Um, and the rifle, and this was the best bit for me, the rifle also frequently just had bits that would just break off in the middle of a gunfight, um, which isn't great. And apparently the bayonets would have issues where they would basically go ballistic whenever soldiers opened fire. So not... Not ideal as your frontline firearm. So uh, eventually, thankfully, all of this criticism was listened to. And in 1997, after years and years of complaints from frontline soldiers, it was decided that the L85 should be upgraded. Now, the upgrade program itself committed in the years 2000 to 2002 and was completed by the famous Heckler and Koch, who actually back then were British owned before they became a German company again. About 200,000 rifles were upgraded from the L85A1 configuration to the L85A2 configuration. 200,000 rifles were upgraded and that's out of the 320,000 that were juiced. This was considered a very significant upgrade and the L85A2 even still remains in service. The A2 has been widely used for well over a decade now. Relatively little problems reported during the more recent operations for the British Armed Forces in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Whilst the value of individual rifles is unknown, most speculate that the rifle costs about £1,000 to £1,500 per rifle. 
The Ministry of Defence stated in 2015, from an accounting perspective, the value of the SA-80 family of weapons currently held by the MOD is £193 million. It is currently forecast that the repair and maintenance of the SA-80 family over the next 10 years will cost around £94 million. The current out-of-service date, so the time that the gun will no longer be used, is 2030. So whilst obviously there are plans to continue to use and maintain the L85A2, some will be receiving an even further upgrade to the A3 variant. Um, this is basically because there was a complaint, so there's still problems with the rifle, there's a complaint from some servicemen that the NATO 5.56mm round doesn't have enough stopping power to down targets quickly. Okay, so it wasn't really all that efficient. And again, Hitler and Koch have been called upon um, to do the upgrade there. The project will cost about five and a half million pounds and the British Army is set to receive up to around 44,000 upgraded rifles. Um, the upgraded version minimizes its visual and infrared spectrums. It becomes more resistant to abrasion, which of course is important as we talked about. Um, comes with a new handguard that supports the upper receiver and basically improves the precision and accuracy of the weapon. So um, to kind of round things off today, the SA-80 L85 was an ambitious project to say the least by British manufacturing, which initially of course failed to deliver and was giving servicemen all sorts of problems. Um, now I have family members that have served in the armed forces before that have talked about this rifle in particular, giving them a lot of grief. Um, ultimately the SA-80, and a lot of people seem to think this when I was looking around online, but ultimately the SA-80 is still tied to the 1980s. So basically, it's not really considered as modern as it could be, especially compared to some of its rivals. The SAS can select any weapon for missions that they want, and it is extremely rare that they will pick up an SA-80. Instead, they opt to use the Canadian-made C8, which is basically the Canadian version of the SA-80's rival, the M16. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. SAS, extreme specialists in covert ops and things like that won't even touch the SA-80. They will pick instead its rival. So it tells you kind of a lot of how that rifle sits with a lot of uh, soldiers and uh, operatives in the SAS as well. Right, so um, now that we've covered the kind of real life elements to the rifle, let's talk a bit about it in the game. As the L-85A2 goes in Battlefield 4, it was one of my favorite rifles to use. It was very consistent, it was very accurate, and it was the kind of weapon you could use in a variety of situations. The L85A2 was actually a DLC weapon for Battlefield 4, and that was with the first DLC, I believe, called China Rising. So as I say, yeah, the rifle was really fun to use. Loads of people were using it uh, as their main weapon. Even now, if you go into Battlefield, you'll get killed by an L85A2 at least once or twice. So that's going to wrap it up for today, our first video on weapon history. I am planning on doing other nations and things like that, but I thought I'd like to start with something homegrown for the first episode. But let me know if you enjoyed this video, and let me know if you used the L85 in Battlefield 4, if it's one of your go-tos in the comments below. Give me a like if you enjoyed the video, a dislike if you didn't, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next video.